But the last time we saw that while God is the only supreme ultimate king over creation, over Israel, we saw that throughout history, God has proposed in his sovereignty that he will bring kings in to actually play a role in his kingdom, to play a role in his purpose, to play a role in what he's doing. So we are going to go back now because we want to apply this specifically to Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28. We are looking at this image of God in man. What is it? So let's read Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 to 28. And God said, let us make man humanity in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image so god created humanity in his own image in the image of god created he him Male and female created he them, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the heart. What does it mean to be a human being? What does it mean to be human? It, it, to be human means that we are created in the image of God. To be human has nothing to do with the color of our skin, to, with where we live, with the class that we were born in. To be human is to be created in the image of God. And all the both genders were equally created in the image of God. Any person of any color are equally, every person of, of every color are equally created in the image of God because to be human is really to be created in the image of God. And verse 27 says, So God created humanity. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And we have looked at some issues arising from, from that, which I'm not going to go back to. If you are not here when we did that, please go back and look at previous teaching. So God alone is the ultimate supreme king over creation and over the children of Israel. And we saw that. That is the image of God that we see in Genesis chapter 1. But we also see in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 that God built human kingship into creation itself. And this is very, very important that we see God the king but also the creation story actually give us another revelation that God built human kingship into creation himself. And Adam and Eve were portrayed as king, or let's just say as king and queen. So the creation of Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1, and when you move it up to Genesis chapter 2, we can see the portrayal, the way they were portrayed, in those portions of the scripture, they were portrayed as kings. They were portrayed as rulers. And this is very clearly seen, obviously, in the commission that God gave to humanity in Genesis chapter 1, verses 28, 26 to 28, when God told them to rule over the earth. And we've, ju we've just read it. We've just read it. God said they should rule over the earth. And God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and word and let them have dominion let them have dominion let them have dominion so we see god exercising kingdom exercising king dominion in the book of genesis chapter 1 and just like we see that god has also called human kings secular kings to actually experience and manifest and also be part of administrating his dominion on earth. Going back to Genesis chapter 1, we saw that the creation of humanity was obviously tied in with this dominion. The image of God in man is intimately tied in 
with their ability to exercise dominion. God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. And this is very, very important. Kingship is at the heart of the commission that God gave to humanity in the creation story. They were given control over plant life. They were given control over the animals. They were given control over the earth. They were given control over plant life, animal life on earth. We see that in Genesis chapter 1, verses 29 and 30. They were told to subdue the earth and to take dominion. We see that in Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. So, in summary, humanity, the man and the woman, they, were, they are to rule the whole world as a subordinate king under God. He is the king of kings. You see, the first man and the first woman were created to be subordinate king under the kingship of God himself. They are to spread God's own dominion outside the boundary, obviously, of the Garden of Eden. They were to spread the dominion of God, the glory of God, the power of God. They were to spread it unto all creation. In this sense, God was reigning over his creation through in and through humanity. And that is the way God created this world to operate. That man will be subordinate king under his rulership. And that through man, his kingdom will flow in them and through them into the creation. It will be God reigning and ruling through his man, through his woman, and reigning in them and reigning through them to affect and to influence creation. And that is the way that God made it to be. Obviously, if you have read any Bible to any extent, you know that something desperately went wrong. We will come to that in another teaching. But suffice to say that this was the plan. And the plan has not changed. This is very important. The plan of God is not for God to rule the earth directly or to reign on earth directly. The plan and the purpose of God from the beginning is to rule on earth through humanity, through the man and the woman. That God is going to reign his creation in and through humanity. And that was the plan of God. There was a spanner that was thrown into the wheel when man fell, when humanity fell, when the man and the woman sinned, when the man and the woman rebelled against the rule and the reign of God. But we need to understand that this initial plan and purpose of God has never changed. And that this is the plan and this is the purpose for which God was working towards in the process of redemption. In the process that unfold from now on through all the pages of the Bible. As you read one character after another character. As you read one story after another story. As you read one event after another event. As you read one covenant after another covenant. It is the restoration of this plan that God desire in the first place when we when the curtain was open as it were when the story began in the book of Genesis chapter 1 that God wants to rule over this earthly creation in and through his vice region in and through his man and his woman in and through his subordinate king praise the Lord now before we move this forward I want us to take, now we know, now we see that man was created in the image of God. That God is the king and man was to rule as a subordinate king. So we want to go back and look at some example in the ancient Near East of the image of God. Because man was going to be, man was created, not was going to, man was created in the image of God. So let's go back to that time and see whether we can learn something about man being the image of God from the environment, from the understanding of the people that live around about that time. The image of God. So I want to talk about images of gods. Now remember now we are talking about the secular gods, the gods of the Gentile world. Now the question is this, where do you find images? Where do you find images of gods? Where do you find images of kings? We find images of gods and we find images of kings in the temple and in the kingdoms. 
Okay, we find the images of gods in the temple. We find images of kings in the kingdom. Sometimes we find images of gods and images of 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 kings in people's home, in people's you know little altar that they've built for themselves, maybe family altar and things like that. Now, why why do emperors and sufferings and kings in ancient world why do they put their image? In the na- in their in their nations, and why do they put their image in subject nations? Why do people put gods in the temple? The image of the king in his kingdom, the image of the king in nations that were subject to him, actually remind everybody that the rule of that king extends to this place. The king's word is law. The king ruled on challenge here. That king that you can see his image is the one that reigns, is the one that rules in this land. And that is why the kings and the sovereign in ancient near his, that is why they will put their image in a particular place. Maybe in our contemporary times, we will put our flag in the place. Okay, when people are running for, you know, for the universe, for the planet, whoever gets that first put their flag on it. Or when people are colonizing other people, or sometimes when ships are carrying things, especially in those days when there are wars, you know, you put your flag on 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 the boat. That means that the the the, the city or the nation whose flag flag is on that boat or or, or that or that boat that that boat belongs to them. Okay, when you go to to nations um, embassy. When you go to the embassy of another nation in another country, they will put the flag of the home nation. In other words, their rule extends to that place. Why do people put the image of their gods in the temple? These images, these status, they let their worshiper know that the God was in some way mysteriously present. We're not talking about the rightness or the wrongness, no. We know that there are no gods, that those gods were demons. But we are talking about what we can learn from the usage of that word, man created in the image of God, in the secular time of the period in which the Bible was written. In the ancient Near East, kings were also designated as images and likeness of particular gods. So the presence of king in a kingdom in ancient Near East was also taken to be to mean that the gods were present in that place. The king was designated as the image and the likeness of particular gods. So they represent the god, the gods, and they mediate the god's blessing to their subject. So let's apply this to our teaching. So God puts his image on earth. God puts his man on earth. God created the man and the woman in his image as his vice regent. Okay. And God put them here because this world belongs to him. Listen to me. For as long as men and women are here, It is a reminder for us that this world does not belong to the devil. This world does not belong to the oligarchy. This world belongs to God because his image is here. The image of God is here. Just like the kings and the sovereign will put their image in their kingdom, just like they will put their image in their subject nation so that people will know their rule extends here, we need to understand that God's kingdom god's will will ultimately be done here on earth as it's been done in heaven that god is the ultimate king that god's will will ultimately be fulfilled here because this king this land this kingdom belongs to him and ultimately the kingdom of this world will be revealed to become the kingdom of our lord like we read in revelation chapter 11 verse 15 Yes, there is a rebellion going on in the kingdom at the moment. But ultimately, this earth, this world, the kingdom of this earth belongs to our God. And the kingdom of this world will become, will experience, will express, will reveal and will respond and become the kingdom of our God. And this is really very, very important. Just like when you have an image of a god in the temple and it revealed that the presence of the god is there the presence of man here actually revealed that god's presence is in this creation 
again, the, the, there's re- rebellion in the, in the kingdom. Yes, there is sin in the, rebe- in the kingdom. There's rebellion in the kingdom. But this kingdom ultimately belongs to God. It may be leased out to man. Man may have thrown it away to the devil. But the truth is that this kingdom belongs to God. And God will redeem him it back. God will redeem it back to himself. And it will, it will cleanse it of all sin. It will cleanse it of all rebellion. The Bible says that it will create a new earth and a new heaven. And that is what the scripture tells us. That is what we learn when we look at the picture of image in ancient Near East. The image is linked with royal mandate to rule and to subdue. The image is linked to the royal mandate to rule and to subdue. Now the verb radar, which means to rule. So when the Bible talks say that they should have dominion, when we talk about ruling, the, the verb radar to rule is always often linked with kingship in the Old Testament. So when we when God let them have dominion, let them rule, that word is often linked with kingship in the Old Testament. And in ancient Near East, a shepherd was also a standard image for a king. So you can see we are throwing up a lot of things here. Rule, dominion, kingship. And now we've thrown in something as a shepherd. One of the picture of a king is that of a shepherd. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God, one of the picture of a king is that of a shepherd. And that is the picture we also see in the world in which Genesis was written. In the ancient Near East, a shepherd was a standard image of a king. Hallelujah. So, so. The image of God in man is associated with royal office, being God's representative, and being God's agent in the world. I'll say that again. So when we say that man is the image of God, that God created the man and the woman, humanity in his image, the image of God in man is associated with royal office, is associated with humanity being God's representative, and humanity being God's agent in the world they are granted authorized power to share god's rule and administration of the arts creatures and resources because we are created in god's image we are granted the authority we are authorized we are granted authorized power to share god's rule to be a conduit through which god will flow in the administration of the earth his creature and is resources and that is what it means for god to have created man in his own image now there's still a lot more we are going to talk about but we can see that the image and dominion in other words the ability to rule they are closely linked but the image is not the dominion now this is very very important the dominion i mean the image allow man to have dominion the purpose of the image is to allow man to rule in other words is the fact that we are made in the image of god that allow us to rule and to reign as god's vice regent it is because we are created in the image and the likeness of god that separate us from other animal and allow us to be able to exercise dominion but the image is self is not that dominion. They are interlinked. Yes, they are. We couldn't be able to exercise dominion if we are not created in the image of God. The purpose of the image is so that we can rule. But we need to understand that the image is not man's domination of the lower creature. Okay, They are closely linked. There's no doubt about that. The authority is not the cause of the image of like or likeness, but the image and the likeness is the ground of the authority. The dominion is is not the cause of the image or likeness, but the image and the likeness is the ground for the authority, is the ground for the dominion. The image marks the distinction between the man and the animal so qualifies him for dominion the latter is the purpose not the essence the dominion is the purpose for the image not the essence of the image or not the essence of the divine image god has created us as his image so that we can have dominion hallelujah so we are going to look into that as we move ahead but 
the the confusion that we see in our world today and the the affliction that we see in our world today and one part of 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 humanity actually afflicting and intimidating and you know oppressing another another group of people because of their color because of their gender is because we have lost this reality we have lost this understanding that we are all created in the image of god when we understand that we'll understand that every life is valuable and the fact that our humanity is what give us the the right or is what equip us to rule and to reign on earth and to the degree to which we are not human to the degree to which we are inhuman to the degree to which we walk away from you know walking in the reality that we are God's image to that degree actually we lost dominion you know we, we we may think that we have you know we have all the you know technology no 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 really we are we are losing control to the degree to which we are going away from God to the degree to which we have rebelled against our creator and our creation and the reason to which God has created us which is really to to be his subordinate king and to rule on that him in worship in in obedience to that degree to which we have moved away and fallen short of that for all have seen and fallen short of the glory of God to the degree to which we rebel against the rule of God against the kingdom of God to that degree we've 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 plunged our t- ourselves into darkness and blindness and evil and that is the reason for the heartache and the terror and the error and the evil and the wickedness that we see around us but Jesus has come to restore humanity to we are God you know planning to be in the first place so that we will learn again what it means to be human that we will walk again in the reality of each and every one of us being the image of God but that comes at a cost hallelujah for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life jesus has come to restore to bring back to to restore that which god designed in the first place listen to me there is a lot of damage done and god is going to come and wrap this thing up and create a new heaven and a new earth but only those people that have submitted that have that have turned around that have repented of their rebellion and submitted to the king only those people will be allowing in into his new kingdom do you want to be one of that then you need to come to him tonight and ask for his forgiveness and ask him to come into your life as your lord and savior you will be born again the old the old nature the old you know wicked evil heart will be taken out of you and it will give you a new nature a new spirit a new heart and then when this is all over you will spend eternity with him in the new heaven and the new heart and the rest of your life here it will work with you it will be there for you hallelujah do it tonight